Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about the problem of barking. But first, there is a small matter to address. Really, it's just another kind of barking. But first, some quick education for everyone watching. If you aren't aware, there is a principle known as the bullshit asymmetry principle, also known as Brandolini's law. It states that the amount of energy needed to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude bigger than that needed to produce it. Brandolini's law, also known as the bullshit asymmetry principle, states that the amount of energy needed to refute nonsense is an order of magnitude larger than to produce it, which means that it takes more effort and explanation to correct an inaccurate information as compared to spreading one. That is why my responses are so much longer than yours. That is because they actually contain content, and are substantive. I saw your video, and it was about what I expected. No real substance, and even after I explained to you that the anti-dog movement is not, in fact, a cult, you still continue to call it one anyway. You should also know that the word, thorough, is not pronounced like, through. Here's the thing, if you had solid arguments, you would focus on those instead of misrepresenting things. If you had a valid point, there would be no reason for you to lie about things like this. Calling something a cult is just a cheap attempt at dismissing it outright, rather than honestly engaging with it. There is a difference between a cult, and a movement. The anti-dog movement is not restricted to the relatively small number of YouTube content creators and commenters. It also includes the dog-free subreddit, and every person all across the world who feels that dog ownership should not be a thing, who dislikes dogs, and so forth. With that in mind, the anti-dog movement is not a formal organization, in the sense that you're thinking. It is more so, a social movement, broadly speaking. But really, it's immaterial. What you are doing here, is taking the focus off of the arguments for the movement, and getting everyone embroiled in a pointless debate about how crazy you want people to believe we are. And again, there are individuals within this collective. Many of us believe very different things, and different content creators have different approaches. There's also this Zeusadism nonsense, which is basically an ad hominem, a kind of character attack a form of slander, and a strange fancy in your own warped imagination. See, even if there are people in the movement who enjoy watching dogs having violence inflicted upon them, there is no basis to assume that the nature of this is somehow sexual. Like, seriously, where did that come from? In the first place, among other things, your video is full of cheap appeals to ridicule, where you basically just pretend something is discredited simply because you believe it is funny. For instance, playing laughter following the part where I pointed out how it is dog nutters who are, in fact, the ones who are obsessed with dogs. Your statement would be like saying that a group of people seeking emancipation from some other grievous social ill, are obsessed with their bondage or subjugation. Quite the contrary, this thing is all around them. So naturally a movement of some kind, which gives it a lot of energy, will naturally arise. If the people were free, they would not be talking about that, at all. Just like how, if dogs weren't a thing, or perhaps if dog ownership were only a rare, tiny, and very niche minority tendency confined to some corner of the globe, then none of us would be talking about dogs. Another lie, your assertion that I, or anyone in the movement, quote, worships I hate dogs. It would probably also behoove you to look up the definition of the word, worship, as well. Following someone's channel does not denote anything like this. There are many people within the movement who disagree with IHD, and with one another, on a wide range of issues. I personally do not even agree with everything IHD says, although I do think his overall message, which is the one thread that connects us all, is on point. To be very specific, I am referring to him pointing out that dogs cause far too many problems in society, for their widespread ownership to be justified. The upward trend of dog ownership and the massive carbon footprint associated with it, calls into question the sustainability of justifying them, all by itself. In point of fact, there are many single issues caused by dogs, which, even if dogs did not cause all the other problems, would make it very problematic, to say the very least. For instance, barking. This is a bizarre exception to the general rule that people are not allowed to disturb the peace, and create horrible, unwanted, booming, yapping, or otherwise grating sound pollution at all hours of the night and day. In the description section of my last video, titled, Why the Anti-Dog Movement is Not a Cult, I mentioned that I do not intend to get into a protracted back and forth with you. Like with that video, I am just putting this out there, as well, and since you are clearly beyond my fine tutelage, this will be the last word. As for barking, there is a great video online, which I can't recommend enough. It is a video by the YouTuber, Defenders of Humans and the Natural World, and it is titled, Barking Dogs Are Ruining Our Lives. I strongly recommend it. If that video and others like it did not already exist, this one would be a lot longer. That is a good place to start. Here is a sample. 
Barking is a huge problem. Typing barking is ruining my life into a Google search bar reveals over 20 million results. This indicates that a lot of people are suffering. This is a problem we can no longer ignore. We need to talk about this. There is a website called BarkingDogs.net, which is very informative. I will link you to it in the description. This website goes into great detail and explains many of the negative and sometimes devastating impacts of chronic exposure to barking dogs and how exactly this exposure affects our health. For dog lovers who think I am biased, the author of this website is totally pro-dog, so you cannot say the information is biased. To quote from the website, when the federal government wanted to push the Branch Davidians to the breaking point in the siege at Waco, they bombarded them with sound, including the sounds of animals in distress. When the U.S. military wanted to drive Manuel Noriega from his sanctuary in Panama, they used the same strategy because they knew that chronic noise is an intolerable irritant that drives people frantic. The owners of barking dogs will sometimes tell you that the fact that you are bothered by the sound means that you have some deep psychological problem, but it is not so. It is normal and natural for people to be irritated and upset as a result of exposure to sound, especially loud, sharp sounds that erupt suddenly and without warning. When chronic noise rings through your home as it does with a barking dog, it is even more upsetting than it would be if the same noise occurred in a different setting. Because your home is your place of refuge, it's where you go to get away from the relentless hammering of the outside world. If you cannot find refuge in your own home, then where are you to go? If a charismatic personality enters the room, he can single-handedly liven up the place and shift everyone into a positive mood. On the other hand, just one person who is angry or desperate or frantic can drag everyone's mood down and spoil the party. That's the nature of people. We are social animals. Most normal, healthy people have a strong tendency to absorb the mood of those around them. Now think about the message a dog is sending when he barks. Either he is angrily shouting out threats to do bodily injury, or screaming out that he's lonely and desperate, or shouting out a frantic alarm. The function of those sounds is to agitate the listener, to force you to pay attention and make it difficult for you to focus on anything else. Of course, there's also the sound of a happy canine at play, but when the next door neighbor's dog is barking all day, that's not the bark you are listening to. What you are hearing is the dog expressing rage, sorrow, desperation, or a frantic state of mind. It is just human nature for us to absorb those feelings and be drawn into the dog's chaotic emotional state." End quote. Now, as a society, we recognize that barking is a problem. The numerous anti-barking devices and methods currently out on the market testify to this. These include electronic collars, citronella collars, sound emitting collars, remote sound emitters, muzzles, debarking surgery, and medication. All great for the $70 billion per year pet industry. Not that great for us, because although we recognize barking as a problem, little is actually being done about it in practice and it continues to ruin our health, relationships, and quality of life. Most dog owners underestimate the problem. They think the sound of barking dogs is natural, just as natural as the sound of birds chirping, but it is not. Dogs are not part of nature. Dogs were genetically engineered by humans through selective breeding. Nature would never have created animals to bark the way dogs do. Wolves and dogs diverged from an extinct wolf species some 15,000 to 40,000 years ago, but while dogs bark, adult wolves do not. Only wolf cubs and juveniles will sometimes bark. The reason wolves don't bark is that they know that if danger is present, the best thing to do is to be as quiet as possible, staying hidden until the threat has passed. Dogs, on the other hand, deal with threats in the opposite way, barking at them until they go away. And they feel threatened by things that are not even threats, like squirrels, friendly visitors, or small children playing on the street minding their own business. Researchers believe dogs learned this behavior from being in close relationship with humans over thousands of years. Humans are very vocal creatures, and through the process of domestication, dogs learn that we are not so great at picking up their nonverbal cues. To make sure that their owners understood what they were trying to communicate, over time our dogs learned to bark. Quoting from a BarkPost.com article, Researchers believe that our dog's barking behaviors are due to years of selective breeding. We prefer dogs that are gentle and friendly, 
and as a result, over the years, have bred these juvenile characteristics into our dogs. And as I'm sure you've guessed, barking is just a side effect of those juvenile behaviors, end quote. Juvenile and friendly, more like dumb and annoying. Why is exposure to chronic barking so profoundly debilitating? Barking is noise pollution. Noise pollution is defined as harmful or annoying levels of noise. Millions of people living next door to barking dogs are telling us that the barking is very annoying and very damaging to them. You can read their stories online. People who have never suffered through extensive exposure to chronic barking often find it difficult to understand why it should be such an incredibly upsetting, debilitating ordeal. Quoting from BarkingDogs.net again, When you hear the sound of a barking dog, it is the sound of a threat or of distress, or it's the sound of an alarm. This triggers the autonomic nervous system to go into a state of arousal. When your brain sends electrical impulses along your nerves, telling the connected organs to speed up, the pupils of your eyes will open wider, your heart will begin beating faster, and your breathing will increase as your lungs begin to work harder. Also, the smooth muscles of your vascular system will react in a way that reduces the blood flow to your hands and feet and channels more blood deep into your body to the major organs.